Welcome to Inspired Startup series of Startup Events. We're currently covering Ireland's second in the series of hardware hackathons with a focus on design and technology, co-hosted by PCH and DCU Innovation Centre. Uh, the event also runs in conjunction with the Web Summit and in partnership with the National College of Art and Design. We are joined today with Liam Casey, CEO and founder of PCH. Um, this company provides end-to-end -end product development and supply chain management across the globe. You might not have heard of the name, but chances are you have some of their products. Probably not the first time you've heard that one, Liam. Yes, I hear it all. <laughs> <laughs> We're delighted Liam took out some time out from today's busy schedule over the hackathon to uh, talk to us today. First off, Liam, could you please tell us a bit about yourself, how your entrepreneurial journeys developed from your early days in Cork through to your retail fashion uh, sector and now to your current position of CEO of PCH. Well, first of all, it's great to be here and we're thrilled to be here for this weekend event and thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, come and spend time with us. So yeah, so I started um, um, in fashion retailing back in Cork about um, quite a long time ago and I spent about 10 years in that business um, where we were you know, buying raw materials, um, taking it to a contract manufacturer and manufacturing garments and then retailing it. Um, we even uh, There was a store in Grafton Street here in Dublin and, um, and then um, I spent about 10 years in that business and then I took a year off, went and I lived in Southern California for a while um, where I... Um, you know, worked for a trading company and a big part of their business was computer hardware and it was some fashion and I was working on the fashion side of the business and the um, the opportunity I saw was that uh, was in to come back home to Ireland to because I saw that there was a lot of manufacturing technology companies based in Ireland and I knew that there must have been an opportunity when I looked at the company I worked for in California so I came back to Ireland and I ended up going to a trade show in Taiwan in Taipei in '96, um, and that's where I got the I had the idea uh, to set up a, a trade, uh, like a trade company or a sourcing company. And uh, eventually, like very quickly, I saw the opportunity to get into like the engineering and the manufacturing mm -hmm. and the, the the packaging and also the, the the distribution and logistics of products as well. Okay. So, and today, if you look at, we go the entire um, end of the supply chain from one end to the other. Mm -hmm. Uh, great, Liam, thanks. Uh, what do you enjoy most about being an entrepreneur? And what would you enjoy least? Uh, what I enjoy most is about the energy you get from on, from entrepreneurs. I mean, the energy that comes from entrepreneurs and that um, that um, belief in what's possible is what I think is mm -hmm. really what inspires um, people to get up and to do stuff, right? And that energy is very unique. We look for it in a lot of the, the, the people we work with. We look for entrepreneurial um, traits. Um, what do I least like about being an entrepreneur? I think what I least like about it is probably having to deal with email. <laughs> as <laughs> think, we all do. Yeah, as we all do, yeah. <laughs> um, I know PCH has three major locations, Cork, um, San Francisco, Silicon Valley, and also Shenzhen in China. Correct. Um, how different are the operations in these locations? And what can Irish entrepreneurs learn from these regions? Um, I think the, I mean, first of all, I mean, you know, we have multiple locations. We've also got offices in places like uh, Australia right. and in South Africa and um, in Cape Town. And it's, you know, one thing that you see is that you can have like multi regional locations, but you can have one culture. I think that's what's important as you mm -hmm. grow a company you need to make sure that the culture stays um, intact okay. and that's probably one of the hardest things if you lose the culture you lose everything okay that's what's really so it's I mean I think that we're lucky that you know we you know we've got some great people and uh, that's what you know really keeps the culture alive and it's the different regions that is keeping the, the different operations going yeah so um, we're very focused on in San Francisco is around product development and it's okay. our customer interaction. Here in Cork, it's very much around um, the you know administration, the whole financing is all done out of here. Customer service, a lot of us done out of here as well. And then we have also have TNS based here in Dublin as well, okay. so a distribution company. And then China is um, a lot of it is around the manufacturing, the engineering, um, and the logistics. Okay. 
Thanks. Let's say back in the early days of PCH, what was the moment when you knew that the company could be successful and how did you make it global? I, and so we were f global from day one because the very first purchase order we got was from a poor, it was a company at a facility in Limerick. They were owned by, uh, they were US headquarters, but they were owned by a Korean company. Uh, our product that we sold was produced in China by a Taiwanese company and it was air freighted through uh, into from Hong Kong to the UK into Ireland. So it was our very first purchase order mm. was international. Even involved uh, in the so very start. And that's that was the DNA since okay. the very start of the company. Okay. Um and um and I think quickly we realized because that customer had a facility in Texas and they also gave us an order for business in Texas and the kind of business and the product very soon went from Hong Kong directly to to Texas. Okay. So it was foreign to foreign business. So it was global from the very start. Okay. Thanks. Um, PCH have their operational headquarters in China, Shenzhen. Now, um, can you give us some insights into how you would like grow a business in China? Yeah, I think that we're lucky that we've got, um, the, as I said earlier, the culture is really important and that the people protect the culture and that, um, the, you know, that we don't think about it as where people are located. We don't think about it as yeah. the, you know, we're, we're dealing with the same customer, whether it's just at a different stage of the process. So you have to have the same standards right throughout, whether it's at the customer interaction level or whether it's at the production level or even dealing with, you know, working with the factory and then all of the steps that are required. So it has to be the same level. So you can't have, a different uh, interaction, different uh, experience for the customer mm -hmm. at any stage. So I think we've been very lucky that our people think just about, you know, what does the customer want and how do we make that happen. Okay. Because um, I know, just in, in taking it to a different perspective with the startups um, that you're involved with, um, it's called Highway One in San Francisco. Um, just like, what inspired you to to do something for the hardware startup community? I think that when we looked at, uh, we've been working with large corporate uh, tech companies for since '96. Um, we saw an opportunity in 2008 where there were a lot of people, uh, engineers that were being let go in their, you know, from sure. the companies that were working in the downturn in Silicon Valley. We saw that a bigger amount of them were actually getting into um, <laughs> startups. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the hardware space and we found that they were you know were starting to create their own mm -hmm. hackathons mm -hmm. they were doing it themselves and they were using Arduino they were using sure. Raspberry Pi or and, and then they were using uh, 3D printing they were using Linux and Android so they were able to come up with working prototypes really really fast and in their own garages in their own garages yeah. right and so we saw this and you know we say that you know, the, you know, people tell you there's a renaissance in hardware. We actually think there's a renaissance in prototyping. Okay. The renaissance in prototyping is fueling a renaissance in hardware. Mm -hmm. And it's because of these new materials that are available for hardware, mm -hmm. like the Arduinos, the Raspberry Pi, the Galileo from Intel, mm -hmm. um, or the Edison from Intel. These are, are creating phenomenal opportunities around innovation mm -hmm. and, uh, and also around just the prototyping is, inspiring people to make um, products. There's a moment of truth in hardware that's very obvious and it's really powerful and it's when you get that first prototype sure. in your hand. That's when a creator or a maker gets really excited. It's the mm -hmm. first prototype and it's the one that they get, you know, they get really excited and they it's amazing when you speak to an entrepreneur the, the day before they have the first prototype mm -hmm. and you speak to them the day they have the first prototype, mm -hmm. the difference is huge. They mm -hmm. get hugely inspired and they kind of get more confident. It's like they have something, they have, they now have their armory. <laughs> yes, sure. <laughs> um, just bring it back to like the Highway 1 incubator. Um, what kind of cool projects might be coming out of that at the moment and any other um, products that you might be shipping at the moment that you've yep. heard of or are going mm. to hear of? Well, we've, we're now on class three and um, they're they're going to graduate in December um, okay. and their demo day I think is on December 9th in San Francisco. Um, 
So class one and class two, we've had some great companies come out of that. I think one here is um, uh, here from Dublin is Adaptix, and they have a product called Drop, oh, which is a connected uh, mm -hmm. kitchen scales mm -hmm. for baking, and it's getting a phenomenal reaction. Um, that's a great company. There's another company called Ringley. It's connected jewellery. Um, again, they're on New York. They're a hugely inspiring uh, team. Um, and then you know, we have um, one that's going to be here at the web summit is Podo, um, which is a camera, remote remote camera, okay. um, which is again very exciting. Um, so there's you know there's phenomenal innovation, and uh, it's all connected back here to what we're doing this weekend at the hackathon because a lot of the inspiration a lot of the ideas come from mm -hmm. events like this mm -hmm. um, and we're seeing very similar trends whether we run a hackathon in san francisco or you run one in dublin okay. there's a very similar trend there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sort of similar products um, what considerations to take into account for somebody pursuing in a hardware startup compared to a software startup like new loopholes that they might not be aware of so and look, building a hardware company and building a software company are very similar. They're both very okay. challenging. They're both of challenges, right? Because you have got, you know, it's one thing to build a product. It's completely different to build a company. And, um, mm -hmm. the, you know, the challenges, uh, if you look at what's different, I think it's the working capital required to fund the, the inventory of a, of the prototype or of the, of the production is okay. the challenge, right? And that's where we work with the companies to help them to make sure that they do this in a smart way. So that would help them to uh, scale up the hardware quicker than Correct. they would otherwise be able oh, to yeah, with that yeah. capital Absolutely. behind without, them. Without selling all their equity, because um, mm -hmm. you, know, the, the, you don't want to put equity to fund inventory. Mm -hmm. That's what we always tell the startups. So it's really like the most uh, technological advancements like that have been of late are really helping startups speed up. Um, and scale up to a pace that was unimaginable oh, yeah. a couple I of mean, years ago. And yeah, and I think you'll see tools like um, um, Indiegogo and Kickstarter. They're great for crowdfunding. Yeah, these are tools that are um, that that will help to get a feel for the marketplace, um, and they will they will help. That they're good at the right to use them at the right time. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we we work with some companies that go through those processes. And like Kano was the the Raspberry Pi computer in the UK, very successful, great mm -hmm. great company with a great team, and you know they actually used Kickstarter to sell their first uh, mm -hmm. uh, batch, and, and we delivered it on time. Yeah, it's 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 a great example of Kano using some new cutting edge technology, like and making it their own the Raspberry Pi, and. Um, just to cross over to like what a lot of the attendees might be doing here at, at the hackathon weekend, some of them like a more experience in software of the uh, than the hardware innovation. Uh, you were saying the skill sets are hopefully easy to uh, up speed on, but would you give them any advice on how to upskill in these new hardware and um, equipment skill sets that they need to? You know, I think all of those skills are out there, and they're they're pretty, you know, they're entry level. What's okay. really important, I think, is the um, the fact that there's design involved, okay. and that's why we're really excited. You know, DCU have been fantastic here, and um, we're so happy that we've got uh, NCAD involved, yeah. um, and that's bringing a huge design mm -hmm. um, advantage. And I would think that that's what's going to differentiate. You know, okay. the, the difference with mm -hmm. uh, if they if they're serious about going on to become companies and start companies, they have to invest in the design. They have to bring design into um, how they think about the company and also about the products um, and also it's great to have design partners here as well mm -hmm. a great design firm here doing phenomenal international work here from uh, from Bray okay and um, you talked about um, a prototyping renaissance happening what do you think are the key factors uh, I think when I was in the garment business I mean I could go to a fabric mill and I could buy 60 meters of fabric and I could take it to a contract manufacturer and I could decide last minute to make any kind of garment. I could make a shirt, okay. I could make a suit from it, whatever I could make it. And I could make that decision last minute. In the tech world, it was much more specific to mm -hmm. them. You know, there was technology roadmaps and product roadmaps that made it very hard okay. to do that. So innovation, mm -hmm. as I said earlier, the moment of truth is really when you get that first prototype, and that was very hard to achieve mm -hmm. before. Um, whereas, when you look now, at 
you know, the challenge in the past was these technology roadmaps and product roadmaps with the big companies. Whereas now, when you look at um, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, and the Galileo, they make it very much easier, mm -hmm. right? You also have the the software tools like the Linux and uh, you know uh, Android, yeah. um, and you also then have three D printing and you see here CNC uh, equipment that's yeah. easily to use and readily available. These are having an impact, and I think that's what's driving the renaissance in prototyping, which is driving this renaissance in hardware. And I'm sure a lot of the mentors will be aware of this prototyping renaissance here over the hackathon weekend, um, and they'll also be giving advice on how teams on how to sell their product. What advice would you give to startups in acquiring the right sales channel and the ability to sell their product? The I mean, again, anyone like if you look at what's working for startups. Today, we see the Chinese model is working more so than the model in the Western world. Okay. And that is the whole idea of selling a product online, direct to consumers, and building your own community. Um, or working with platforms to ensure that you have access to a community that you can sell product. The most important thing is that, that you can actually build a community and that you can actually co communicate directly with that community. Okay. Um, if you go through the traditional old um, a retail channel where you don't have access to build the, the, the relationship with the with the consumer, then it makes it extremely hard. It also adds a layer of you know financing that's required and mm -hmm. also adds time. And in, in the hardware world, time is often the number one currency. Yeah. So you want to keep it very short. Okay. <laughs> Um, have PCH any more innovative project plans in the pipeline for Ireland in the future? Obviously, I know you'll continue to do more hackathon events here, but uh, what other opportunities in Ireland might you might be most focused on? When we look at um, our business, we, in our business we manage three flows. We manage the flow of information, the flow of product, and the flow of cash. Um, we think Ireland plays a huge part in the whole managing the flow of information and also the flow of cash. So managing our customer service based here in Ireland is a huge, of huge interest to us. Where you have, um, a, if, if you look at from 8 o'clock in the morning in China to 6 o'clock in the evening in California is 26 hours. And Ireland is right in the middle. And there's a huge advantage. Our people come into the office. You know, our people in China do get some work done. People come into the office here. It's halfway through the day in China. Mm. They get the information from China. They prepare the information to send to our customers in the in the US, and they're they're a couple of hours ahead. Using the time zones is a okay. huge advantage. So we think Ireland is a great place to manage that flow of information. Uh, we also manage all of our finances out of Cork. So okay. that's a it's a great network important. hub for global operations. Really yeah. great. And again, we also think that Ireland has a great. Um, it's a great location for R and D around some of the other parts of our business that we think we can, you know, we can definitely expand. Okay. Thanks, Liam. Um, just to wrap things up, could you give us some key learnings from your entrepreneurial career and tips you would give to startups? Um, I, I think the you know stay focused on the price <laughs> is important for them. The for the startups we work with again. You know, what we'll always say to them is that you win and lose in the high streets in the US and we win and lose on the back streets of China. <laughs> so stay very focused on, you know, delivering um, the, you know, what the consumers want. And, you know, that's where we can help them mm -hmm. uh, to make sure the product is right. But, you know, they've got to stay connected to the consumers. Okay. Thanks, Liam. Um, so that concludes our talk with CEO and founder of PCH. Liam Casey. Thanks, Liam, for your time, and I look forward to hearing of more uh, PCH Great. success stories in the future. Thank you. Thank you.